Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my coding journey and why I decided to learn how to code. Split this up into three parts to make it a little bit easier. The first part is going to talk about just my background with coding, what that kind of looked like. The second part is going to cover the mistakes that I made and the previous approaches that I took to learning how to code. And the third part is going to be my current motivation and my current approaches to learning. So without further ado, let's dive in. So starting off with my background with programming, I actually learned how to code in school a little bit. Uh, never really touched it or knew about it much in high school to be honest. But in university, studying management engineering, we did have to take some typical data structures and algorithms, um, software principles, like database design courses. So I did get some fundamental learnings there. But to be honest, I really hated those courses back in the day. I honestly dreaded them. I cried for a lot of the assignments. And overall, I just felt like, you know what, this isn't for me. I just thought that I didn't have enough patience for it. And so my mindset at that time was, let's just do the assignments, let's just do this to get it done and pass, rather than to fully understand and learn, I suppose. Moving on to the things that I did wrong in the past. So I have made a lot of mistakes on my journey to becoming more technical, and I'm sure there's more mistakes that I'm gonna to continue to make. When I decided that I wanted to become more technical, I told myself every single year, this is gonna be the year that I do it. This is gonna be the year that I get more technical. And every year I started to notice that I was letting myself down. I wasn't really reaching that goal because I didn't really have a clear goal in mind. I didn't really know what extent or level of technical I wanted to become or even what the real motivation for becoming technical was. A lot of it was just extrinsic factors like being more employable or the fact that a lot of people in my university are very good at programming. The approaches that I took previously were things like YouTube tutorials, uh, Udemy courses, Coursera courses, but a lot of those things just didn't really work for me. I think that for me, I'm someone who needs to have something interesting to build and for me a lot of those like tutorials that I found weren't really interesting or those courses just didn't really have um, interesting projects that I wanted to follow through so I would never ever actually finish a course I would get through maybe 20% maybe 50% but I would never finish any of these courses to 100% and I think that also kind of got to me mentally in a sense of um, hey why can't you finish these like why can't you put in the work and so it became more of a chore than it did something that I actually enjoyed. One of the other things that I tried to do was learn specific technologies um, you know I tried to learn React specifically I tried to learn like even basic things like HTML CSS uh, because these were kind of like trendy technologies same with Python uh, just because they were popular people seemed to use them people thought they were easy so I was like hey sure let's use this. I think by leading first with the technologies rather than what I actually wanted to build made it again really hard to tie in how am I going to actually use these fundamentals to ship something that I actually want to create. My phone just died on me and said the storage space is full so I had to reset a little bit. For the third part we're going to talk a little bit about my current approach to learning and my current motivation. For a little bit of time, I had actually given up on becoming more technical. I genuinely thought that it just wasn't going to happen, that I just didn't really have it in me, and I just kind of crossed it off of my list of things that I wanted to do for a little bit. I kind of just told myself, you know what, Mylene, maybe you should just focus on the things that you already um, have strengths towards. So maybe it's more of the business and product side of things, um, maybe focus on honing in on that. And it wasn't until 2022 that I actually re-sparked the motivation to get more technical. In January of that year, I discovered Web3 technologies and kind of got really into um, like NFTs, crypto, and just learning about this whole future of the internet. And that was really what sparked the motivation to start coding again because as I got deeper into the space, I realized you really do need to have a good technical foundation to be able to get even deeper. And so in order to keep up with the industry, keep up with the trends and what's going on, I wanted, I felt more motivated to get more technically sound. This time around, 
it felt very different when I wanted to go ahead and approach programming. The other thing that was really helpful was um, in the tech Twitter communities that I was in in Web3, everyone seemed really, really helpful and it felt almost like an even playing field where everyone was learning and everyone was open to share. And so because of both the community and my new interest in this space, I was a lot more intrinsically motivated to start programming rather than extrinsically like before. So I got started again with programming through doing some of the Alchemy courses. They were releasing weekly tutorials called Road to Web 3. That was a good spark and kind of got the ball rolling for me. But again, in typical nature of courses, I just never really finished or followed through with them. My current approach to programming has been, what if I just think of something cool that I want to build? And I know it sounds really mundane, but it's actually a lot harder than you thought because for me, I thought that cool had to be something that everyone else wanted to use. It had to be something that, um, you know, had a real, was solving a real problem because that's kind of how I was wired to think for a really long time. As someone who has had more of that founder mindset, you're always told to build when there's a real problem in front of you. And so I had to, again, kind of rewire my brain to think of, okay, what is just something cool? Like just to get me through that first hurdle of shipping my first thing, um, what is something cool that I want to see? What brings me joy? Instead of thinking about the emerging technologies, instead of thinking about like, what's cool or whatever, I was just trying to think of what is something small that I want to see? And so I was thinking about different projects that I've seen in the past, different things. And one of the things that sparked my interest was um, imissmycafe.com, which is literally just this website where you can toggle different sounds and it's supposed to emulate what it's like to be at a cafe. And so I was like, okay, that site is not solving like business problem or anything like that. What is something like that that I can make? And so I was thinking, I was thinking, and then I realized, hmm, wouldn't it be cool if you could share letters or lessons uh, with strangers? And a lot of this is inspired by an actual um, in-person project that I saw in 2019 in New York called The Strangers Project. Uh, a guy named Brandon runs that, and he basically collects letters from strangers across the world and just displays them uh, in person in these installations. So I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be cool to digitize that because why not, right? Like it's not solving some business problem, but it's really interesting to me and it would bring me joy. And so I started hacking away at that and I realized that my approach to learning there was just seeing what technologies and tools that I need to use to actually make that project work. With all the tools that we have today, like ChatGPT, friends who code, and like boilerplate projects, it's really, really simple to get started as long as you have that end goal in mind. Again, not focusing on specific technologies, but rather this is the end product. What tools can I use to actually get there? And this has been honestly revolutionary in my eyes of actually shipping stuff because I actually was able to get something out there. And it's a very, very simple site, but it works and I put it out in the world and that's all that matters. So now that I've gone past that first hurdle, maybe in the future I can work on some of those bigger projects or work on that next like revolutionary idea. But for now, I'm really content with just shipping things that bring me joy. So I hope that that was interesting. I hope it was helpful just to get a little bit more background on me and why I'm going on this journey. And maybe some of it resonates with you, but thanks so much for listening. Oh, and one last thing, this is just a reminder that your journey is your own. You don't need to become technical if you don't want to, if it feels like a chore, it is completely up to you. My one biggest piece of advice is just find something that intrinsically motivates you and follow that. Don't just follow it because it's trendy or because you feel like you have to. The best results come from when you actually genuinely care for something and want to see it happen. Whether you're on a journey to become more technical or you're on a different journey, I wish you the best of luck and thanks for listening. Oh boy.